This is a Victron Orion Smart DC to DC charger that I am almost finished installing in our 2011 Airstream front bedroom queen bed travel trailer. Okay. Now, what this does is it allows you to fully charge your batteries using your alternator while you're towing your trailer down the road. So if you're boondocking for multiple days without an electrical, a shoreline electrical connection, this will allow you to fully charge your batteries without having to run a generator, which can be awesome because running a generator is a pain in the butt at least, and it's against rules in some campgrounds, and it's almost always against the rules outside of certain hours. So this is a pretty expensive accessory, uh, but uh, if you decide that it works with the way you use your uh, RV, um, I think it's justified, obviously. I shelled out my hard earned for it. And uh, anyway, here's the, the rundown on installing it, okay? First of all, obviously, there's some pretty hefty wires coming out of it, right? Um, in this case, this is a non-isolated model, okay? And that just means that the grounds from the charging system, which in this case is our tow vehicle, a Ford truck, and the grounds on the uh, travel trailer or the RV are tied together. They're, they are electrically bonded, okay? Now, this is a long run of wire that goes all the way up to the uh, alternator of my truck, okay? So I have used number six AWG welding cable for that run. And you can see at this point, I had to go down through the floor of the Airstream to get it out of the living space, right? Okay, so you see the one that's wrapped in orange, uh, that is the positive going to the positive side of the charging system, which actually is the positive side of the battery and is how I hooked it up. And then the, the big black wire going down through the floor goes directly to the negative side of one of the batteries. Now, the little red wire right there, okay, that is an optional, in this case of the Victron, um, manual disconnect, okay? And um, in my Ford truck, comes pre-wired with what are called upfitter switches. And so it made it pretty easy to hook it up in the truck um, because the, the, the truck already had made allowances for accessories like this. So this wire, when the switch is turned on, just carries plain 12 volt uh, signal. It doesn't really carry any current to mount to anything. It's just a signal that tells the, uh, uh, charger that it's okay for it to come on. However, the reason I said it's optional is because um, the charger can detect when the alternator is running and uh, it will turn itself off if the alternator is not running or if the battery is disconnected or battery, if you're disconnected from the truck, it turns itself off. If, the, uh, if it's connected to the truck, but the engine's not running, it doesn't turn itself on. Um, but when the alternator is running and everything's hooked up, it will turn itself on without that little red wire, so it's optional. Um, I opted to go to really not much more trouble to use that little red wire to give myself a manual disconnect because <clears throat> I have a limited amount of faith in technology. And um, one of the number one breakdowns that I've had happen to me in my life is an alternator failure. And so if I see that the alternator or the charging system might be struggling, uh, I want to be able to turn that off. And of course, in my case, since this is a travel trailer, I could always pull over and unplug the cable from where it hooks to the truck. And that would work too. So this that part really is optional. Okay. Now, obviously, as previously mentioned, there is a ground wire going to the vehicle ground and a hot wire going to the charging system. Okay. And... However, the ground wire, actually, if you see, if you follow it right there, it goes up to this bus bar, 
okay? As mentioned before, the non-isolated charger, um, the grounds of the vehicle and of the RV are tied together. So that, that happens right here at the bus bar. So that ground wire goes up to the bus bar and then another wire comes back out and goes to the charger, okay? Very simple. And then the yellow wrapped wire comes from the vehicle charger into the DC to DC charger. And then that red wire comes back out and goes all the way over and hooks to the positive bus of the DC system of the RV. Now, these bus bars are accessories that I've added. Um, I really think you're going to have to do that probably. Uh, you're going to have to do something like that in order to run a DC, DC charger because you're not going to have spaces to hook it up. So the stock bus bar is right there. And as you can see, it's not nearly as beefy. Um, that's probably okay if the only thing you're ever going to do is a DC to DC charger. Might be okay. And right there is the negative bus bar. And they're pretty full and they are not near as uh, robustly made, shall we say. Um, one reason I have installed the accessory bus bars is because um, I may want to add solar in the future and this will make that simpler, okay? And also I have another video on this, which is the Victron Smart Shunt battery monitor. But anyway, that is that. Now, some of you may be wondering about the uh, the gray box that the DC to DC charger is in. Now, these things get pretty hot. They have, if you look under there, the, the heat sink fins coming out of the bottom of them. They're designed so that when they're mounted on the wall in the on a vertical surface as they're supposed to be, um, the heat causes airflow to come in through the bottom across the, uh, the cooling fins and then goes out the top. Now, I don't have a hidden location in my camper that will accommodate those needs. Uh, the, if I put it in the, uh, sp the hidden space that I have that I could put this, um, there's not going to be enough air volume in there and it might get too hot. So this is going to be mounted um, right next to the bed um, in an unobtrusive place. Um, I'll show you later in the video. But anyway, this is a, uh, an electrical, an interior electrical uh, junction box, which I've modified. Obviously I've cut holes in the bottom and then I very carefully used a file and sandpaper and deburred those edges, cut a hole in, hole in the top. And then I put a piece of screen wire on the top of it. So this will keep anything like blankets or bed clothes from coming in direct contact with this. Although it's not probably going to get hot enough to actually start a fire, uh, but uh, this puts me within specs of what the manufacturer says it should be. It should be, it should be mounted on a non-flammable surface and so this metal box accomplishes that. Um, you may or may not want or need to do all this, but this is how I've done it. Okay. That's all that I have inside of the trailer. I hope this is helpful to somebody. That's it. Thanks.